Well, for the videos today, um, rather than introducing any major new topics, um, I want to do a larger example where I pull a number of topics together. And um, in, in particular, I want to look at making um, GeoPandas maps and also animations. And I'm putting that together. Well, what do we get? We get an animated map. And um, to review some of this web stuff that we've done, we're going to be scraping the data for this um, animated map from, from a website. And so here I am on the City of Madison Fire Department website. And if I scroll down a little bit, they have all of these um, reports of different things that are happening. Um, so I don't know, there's a garage fire or um, uh, accident on the belt line, or I guess um, there's a fire inside of a greenhouse. Um, and so what I want to try to do is pull out all of this data from this report. And um, what I'm going to do with these addresses is convert those to latitude and longitudes. And so I can have uh, basically a shape file. And then I want to look at the dates. And based on the dates, I want to be able to do an animation of um, 2020 and 2021 and, and basically show um, when and where these um, different incidents were happening that the fire department had to deal with. And so the first thing I will do in this situation is I'll try to figure out how I can get this data. So I might look at the piece of information I'm interested in. I might right click on it and say inspect. And so I can kind of, if I shrink this down here a little bit, as I scroll over this, I can see different pieces, right? And so maybe I'm interested in seeing that whole, whole row, right? There's a row right there. And then there's different elements inside of it. And um, one of the things I'm noticing is that normally we have this table tag and TR tag for table row and then TD. And it's different here. I see that everything is this DIV. And so that's going to help me as I'm thinking about how to scrape that. It's going to be a little bit different. And then the other thing I want to figure out is whether I should use Selenium or the Requests module. And the way I'll try to figure that out is I'll right click on this and I'll hit View Page Source. And then I'm going to search for some of the text I saw here. So I cruise, respond. And, and I see I'm finding that right here directly in the HTML for this page. And so what that means is that the Requests module is good enough. I don't have to use Selenium. Um, if I searched in here and I didn't see this content, that might mean that um, JavaScript is automatically pulling this from somewhere and then adding it, in which case Selenium would be a better bet, but, but this seems relatively simple in comparison. So the first thing I want to do is pull down all the pages for this site. And um, I can see there's a bunch of pages, and as I start going through them, this trying to show that in the URL up here, so that's page one. Uh, and then I guess if I go to page three, it says page two. So it actually looks like they're counting from zero. If I go to page zero, um, that should be the main page. And indeed it is. That's the page we're on. So that was the default. And um, and so what I want to do is I want to download, um, I'll just say maybe like 10 pages. And for now, I wonder if that's going to be enough. Let me see if I can go that far. I want to grab all of um, 2020 in this case. Um, not quite enough. I guess that hits about ha halfway through the year. Maybe a little farther. I did all of 2020, getting pretty close here. We're back to January of 2020. And what about this one? Okay, this is back to 2019. So um, I guess pages 16 and earlier should be enough, right? Does this, even before this, I guess, can be um, fine. Let me see here. Uh, well, that's all 2019 too. Let me check this one. Okay, so this is a page where we actually start seeing some 2020 stuff. Okay, so let me make a note of that over here. And um, when I'm doing this, what I like to do is first write one notebook that just downloads everything. Um, I like to separate any sort of work that is um, interacting with the internet from my other analysis work um, for multiple reasons. One is that I don't want to keep hitting this website too, too much. I mean, that's going to cause problems for them, maybe increase their expenses. And then also, um, you know, if the site goes away or I'm traveling or something like that, I can still have the data I pulled down originally and still be doing an analysis on it. I won't be stuck if I'm, say, on a plane or something. So I'm going to head over here and I'm going to create a new notebook. And I'm going to call this one um, poll HTML. And I'm going to import the request module. And I'm going to try to request.get of that page that I was just on. And that's going to return a response object, um, a response object from the request module. And then I say r dot raise for status to make sure that I didn't get an error message. And I'm just going to look at that right here. 
and um, and I see, okay, great, I have all the HTML of that page. And, and so what I like to do is I like to save that to some sort of file. I'm gonna do it like this. I'm gonna say um, uh, with open, and then maybe what I'll do over here is I'll create a new directory for all my um, for all my HTML files. So I'm just gonna call that um, HTML, and then I'm gonna say with open um, HTML slash, and um, and then I'm gonna say well. What is the name of it? I'll say this is like 13.html. And, um, and this is not great. Um, I know I may be running this on Linux, so um, it's kind of okay that I would do that. But what will be better is if I um, do like an os.path.join. So I'm just gonna say import os, and then say os.path.join. And then if at some point somebody tries to run this on, um, on say uh, Windows, right, then it'll be easier for them to get that up and running. And then I'm gonna call that thing F. And then down here, I'm just gonna save that F dot right, like that. And so let me do this again. And and why is it unhappy? Because I'm short of parentheses there. And I need to import operating systems. And, um, and then my other problem here is that there's no such file or directory because I'm creating it. So I need to say W. And so that seemed to do something if I head over here and peek inside of here. Sure enough, I actually have the HTML for the page, which is great, right? So um, that's all good. Um, what I should do now is put this in a loop. So I'm gonna say um, for i in range, um, it's gonna start at zero, and I, and I wanna include this page 13. So I'm actually gonna say 14 here. I'm gonna tab all this in, and, um, and now I'm gonna get rid of the hard coding, right? So I'm gonna delete that and say plus stir of, well, what is the i? And then the same thing down here, um, stir of i, os.html and, um, and, and, and just maybe I'll have some prints here just to show what's happening. I'm going to have a URL variable like this because then that will allow me to print it. So I run that and, um, and this is going to download all the pages for me and I'll just have to wait for a moment while that completes and, um, and then I can get on to the business of actually uh, pulling that data out. Again, I chose um, requests instead of Selenium here because requests is simpler, and I don't need the complexity of Selenium because uh, there doesn't seem to be any JavaScript in this page that is uh, populating the tables. Okay, so that's great. And then I'm gonna peek over here and make sure I have all my files, and I do. And so that's all good. Um, heading back here, um, I want to try to build a data frame from that. So. Um, maybe I'll create another notebook that will be parsing HTML. I'm going to call this one um, parse HTML. And what will I do here? I'm going to import OS again. And maybe um, the first thing I'll do is I'll list dir on that HTML directory because that's all the stuff I want to read. Um, and, and so maybe I'll call that uh, file names equals that. And then just file name. Maybe I'll just start with um, one of them. So I'll say f names of zero. Okay, and um, and then what I want to do is I want to read that thing. So I'm going to say with open. Well, and, and this is inside of the HTML directory, so I better join that. So I better say os.join um, HTML with the name of that file as f. Then I can pull on that uh, HTML, right? The contents of from f.read. And then once I'm there, well, first off, I, I'm writing way too much code without testing it. Let me just make sure I'm, I'm doing something there. Uh, and then I see this on line three right here. Um, OS doesn't have um, uh, doesn't have a join, so I can say uh, dot path dot join, and great right now I have a big string right here. And so I want to parse that, and I can do that with beautiful soup. And so I'm going to say up here from BS4 uh, import beautiful soup. And, and by the way, I made a little bit of a point about this before, but I want to stress it again. Um, all the stuff I'm doing could be done offline now. I've already downloaded. Um, I've already downloaded all of my um, all my HTML files, and, and, and parsing it doesn't require internet access, which is great. So I can have a document here, which will be um, will be just a beautiful soup document. And from that, I'm going to grab uh, HTML like that, 
And then sometimes, depending on what version of um, Beautiful Soup you're on, you have to tell it explicitly that you're doing that, but it doesn't seem like that's the case here. So I'm going to do a doc find all, and I want to look for those div tags that I saw before. And um, and what's drawing on there, none type is not callable. That, that almost makes it seem like um, doc is none. Is that true? Well, that, that doesn't seem like that's none, so let me try this again. Um, and that's, that's pretty strange, right? I guess find all. So it seems like something is not callable. And so any sort of calls where I have these parentheses. So maybe what this is trying to tell me is that find all is none. Let me try that. Um, and it is, right? So it's kind of weird that they have that as none. Maybe what I really wanted was to have this method here. So great, I can call that method and then I look for those divs um, like so. And, um, and then I get a whole bunch of stuff, right? And, and the ones I'm looking for are the ones that um, contain rows, right? So um, let me see here if I can find, I remember when I was looking at the HTML earlier, it said, said row. So I want to find these ones that say class of row, right? So I'm going to say for div and, and that thing. Um, first off, let me just print off the, the attributes of each one, right? And, and so what I'm looking for here is to find one that says row. And so what I'll say is, let me take a look at this. I'm, I'm printing off this attributes. That's this whole big dictionary here. And, and so I kind of want to dive in to the class, right? So I want to get to this right here. So I'm going to say, um, show me what the class is, one of the attributes. And my problem, right? Okay, well, I have an error here on this line eight. So maybe like right before that, I should print off the thing that I was trying to access right before it crashed. I see, okay, well, they don't always have this um, class in them. A lot of them did, but not all of them. So when that's true, then what I like to do is I like to say get instead of um, using the brackets. That does the same thing, except that I can give it a default value here. And for my default, I'm just gonna do this. And, um, and by passing a default, my code should hopefully work. Um, it, it should hopefully work even if I, um, you know, they don't all, all have that. And so now that I have this, I can check, well, is it actually a row or not? And so I'm gonna say, um, if row is, um, is in that thing, then what? Then maybe I'll print off that div. And so great, so I see there's a bunch of these divs. And um, eventually, um, if I scroll down a little bit, um, I think there's some other uh, kind of rows on the table. But, but eventually, I see that, um, well, there's a header there. I, I see some things like, well, here's an actual incident, right? And so maybe I want to narrow it down a little bit more. I'd like it to actually say um, incident in it. So um, I'm going to say, uh, I could keep nesting it like this, right? I could say something like um, if um, incident is in div.text. Let me try that. And, and now I'm kind of narrowing down to what actually matters, right? Um, is that true? Why did it print off so many things? Um, let, let me just put a break here and try to figure out why it's showing me that first one. Um, Oh, because it's, it's quite large, right? It's actually including a whole bunch of things, right? So I think that's my problem. Um, right, because this one began, then there's one inside of that, and then another one inside of that, right? So um, maybe what I'll do is I'll try to actually narrow it down a little bit more. Uh, let me see if this hidden XS thing is going to help me. Nope, there's only one of those. So... Um, Maybe what I'll do is actually look for these things called these pseudo tables, right? That can help me narrow it down um, a little bit more. All right, so let's try this. I'm gonna head down here, I'm gonna say a doc.find all. I wanna look for a pseudo table. All right, not, not like that, I actually wanna look for a, a div. And, um, and then what I'm interested in or div and this is um, 
I want to check if it is one of these pseudo tables, right? So I'm going to say very similar to before, if pseudo table is in that, then I'm going to print off that div. Okay, so now I see I have this pseudo table here. And, um, and maybe I'm just curious how many there are, right? So I'm just going to print like hi. And I see, okay, great, there's only one pseudo table um, in, in the whole thing. So what I should do, right, when I started just looking for all the rows before, I was finding um, rows that are unrelated. And, and maybe if I head back here, I might be able to see examples of why that is. Um, maybe, um, for example, I was seeing text like from this thing over here. So apparently like this is a table or um, this form down here, apparently this is a table. And, and so what I wanted to look for is that pseudo table. And then that actually has the rows I'm interested in. All right, so I'm gonna head back here. And, um, and so now that I've narrowed this down a little bit, um, what I can do is I can say, well, here's my table equals none. And then if I do this, if I actually find it, I'll say table equals div, and I'm going to break. And then I'm going to assert that table is not equal to none. And then I'm just trying to look at it at the end. Great, I see I have this straight table. And so now I can actually switch this around, right? Before I was looping over too many rows. And, um, and what I should really do is switch this around like this, I have this nice table. And then instead of searching in the whole document for these rows, uh, I'm just trying to search in that pseudo table that I found, right? So I'm kind of, um, there's a lot of kind of trial and error when you're doing this parsing, right? I wanna um, try to pull exactly the right data, not no more and no less. Okay, and that seems like it is too narrow now um, because I'm, I'm breaking here, right? So let me do this. And now this seems pretty good, right? So I have that header row, and then um, I have a row here. Maybe let me, sometimes um, I like to put an extra print so I can just see the separation a little bit. So I think this was one incident, right? Fire and golf shot outside of Eastside Restaurant. Here's another one. Uh, nobody injured in Northside Fire. Uh, um, three taken to hospital. Right, so it seems like I'm doing a pretty good job now of actually pulling these things out. Um, so now that I'm actually inside of this, right, and I have each of these pieces, uh, what I'd like to do is identify um, each of the cells, right? And, um, and so I can see that inside of this, there are a bunch of these smaller uh, DIVs, right, that have the word column um, in them, right? So maybe what I'll do is I'll just search for ones that contain this. So let me do this. So I, I'm inside of this row, and, and I, I should really try to um, kind of clean this up a little bit since I'm going to start having more of them. Um, so what I'll do now is I'll say um, uh, within that row, I can say dot find all. You see how I keep narrowing this down, right? First, I found a div on the big page that um, said uh, pseudo table in it, and then and I stored that div, right? And then inside of that one, I'm searching for the DIVs within that. And then I may do the same thing here. Right? I found a, a DIV that represents the role I want. And then within, within of that, I'm actually looking for um, uh, for other DIVs that are going to um, contain this information I want here. Right. So I'm going to say for cell in this thing. Uh, let me just print off that cell. And, and then I think for the moment, what will actually work well is um, after I found one role, I'm just going to break. So I can just see what's drawing on there. So I'm looping over all these things quite nicely, right? And um, if I say dot text, it's even nicer, right? All this stuff came from that header row. And so maybe instead of doing this, I'm just gonna put an extra print here and I can see that I'm very nicely pulling out the different chunks of text, right? And each of these things are gonna be different um, columns, of course. All right, so this seems good. Um, I think what I wanna do is start building up my um, dictionary, right? So, um, or not my dictionary, but um, but my um, the data I'm going to use to create my um, my data frame, and, and so that can be a list of dictionaries. So maybe what will I call that? I'll, I'll call that um, maybe I'll just call it data, kind of non-creatively, and so this is going to be a, a list of dicks, each of which represents a row, right? So as I'm cruising along here. Um, what I want to do is I want to split based on this um, colon. And then uh, the thing to the right will be the text and then the thing to the left. Um, 
the thing to the left will be uh, the, the column name. Now, um, I'm not seeing any examples here, but one thing I'm always careful about here is that uh, splitting is very tempting, right? If I split here, then you know this would be a position zero and this would be a position one. The problem with splitting is that um, maybe there's a colon over here on the right-hand side too. And in the case that would break, right? Because I did three parts, not the, the whole thing. And, and so what I'm actually gonna do is um, slightly different. I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna say IDX equals um, cell text dot um, find. And I'm gonna search for a colon. And I'm gonna assert that index is greater than or equal to zero. So I actually found it. If that is not finding a colon, I wanna know because then maybe I have some sort of error and I should deal with it. And um, and then what? I can say that the, the key equals the stuff to the left of that. So that would be um, cell.text and then a slice prior to that index. And then the value would be the opposite of that, everything after it. And, and I don't actually want to include that colon itself, so I'm going to say that. And so let me print off the key and the value here now. And then I can actually get rid of this too. And I see already my assert is failing. So what's going on with that? So right before that, I'm going to print off what the cell.text is. And I see that, okay, well, I have this incident thing, which is not what I'm interested in. So, so maybe instead of having this be an assert, since that's not in the header, I, I can just skip that, right? I can say... Um, if I, IDX is less than zero, that means I didn't find it. I'm just trying to strip this cell. And so now this seems pretty good, right? I'm grabbing all of these different um, things. And where is all my prints coming from? Uh, let me clean this up so I can actually see. All right, so what am I doing? I'm printing like key, value, key, value. That all seems pretty great. I think that there's some extra spaces there. So let me just strip both of those. And now this is looking pretty good, right? So when I'm getting these key values, what I want to do is I want to put that in a, a new uh, dictionary row, right? So um, I'm going to say I have a dictionary row and then the key is going to equal the value. And, and so where should I create this thing? Well, I guess right before I started looping over the cells, right? When I'm looping over a new batch of cells, well, that's a new row, right? So here I'm going to do that. And then down here, I'm going to say data.append right after I've filled that whole thing, uh, the dictionary row. Then I'm all done down here, and what do I have? I can look at my data, and I have this nice list of dictionaries, and I can see the first one's um, empty, um, which is fine because that was a, a header, basically, right? So um, maybe what I'm going to do now is um, maybe I'll just say, like, you know, if the length of dict row uh, equals four, well, I don't want to quite say that. Uh, I'll just say if length of dict row is greater than zero, all right? So I can get rid of that empty one at the beginning. And I have all of this. And this is very nice because, well, I can convert it to a data frame. So if I say like pandas data frame, all of that, what is it going to do? Each one of these dictionaries is going to be on, on row. And it's going to figure out these common keys can be um, basically column names up at the top. And, and to do that, I have to import that. So I'm going to say, um, import pandas as pd, and if I head back here, um, now I get this great, uh, great table, right, with everything that I'm interested in. And some of them had these um, updated things, and, and some didn't, and it's just being smart about putting NANDs there. Um, so this seems like it's working um, pretty well for me. Now, this was just for one of them, right? This was that single file, and let me just look again what that was. I take a peek at F name. I was looking at file number nine, because that's happened to be what I had. Um, what I'd like to do now that I have all this code is try to convert it into some sort of general general function, right? And so um, really what I'm looking at is that for this F name, I'd like to be able to pass different things in, right? So that seems like it's going to be a natural, um, uh, a natural parameter to have. So I'm going to say, maybe I'm going to say like HTML to data frame, and then I'm going to pass an F name. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to indent all this in, of course. And then all this other good stuff that I did can be part of this. I'm just going to select this all and say tab. All of this can be same deal there. And, and so I kind of have um, uh, maybe a little bit circuitously built this nice function that's going to help me load in, um, load in different files, right? So let me take a look here. So one of the things I could do is I could say um, I should test that it still works, right, after I did all this refactoring, but I could say um, 
like f names of zero, right? And then it's not printing anything because I didn't actually return anything, right? When they, I don't get any output, that means that the function probably returned none. And so I have that, and then I can, um, that was one of them, here's another one. Um, and so this is all great. And so that was just kind of for testing purposes. So I'm gonna just say like head there. Um, what I wanna do now is actually get all the different pages. And, um, and that's actually, I can use this down here, right? What are all the different pages? These things. And so what I can do is I can loop over them, right? I can say uh, for uh, f name and f names, I want to call this thing, right? I want to call it on, um, on the, the file name I just had. And that will give me a data frame. And so I'm going to get something like um, 14 different data frames. And so I should probably have a list of them. So I'm going to say dfs equals a list. And I'm going to throw all of these together. Right? Or why not even just shorten it, right? Um, I don't need a separate variable there. And then maybe down here, I'm just going to look at that length of dfs. Right? There's 14 of them. And each one is a different data frame. And I want to glue them all together. And the way I'll do that is I'll say pandas.gencat. And I'll say um, my data frames, right? I want to glue them all together. And now I get like 140 rows because there's a bunch of events across these different pages. <coughs> um, one of the things I'm seeing is that um, if I look at this um, dot index, when I concatenate it, uh, it starts repeating again. And so maybe I should say something like, um, uh, like reset index. And then what it's trying to do is it's actually number it properly, but you see it took my prior index and it shoved it here, which is a little weird. And so um, I can actually say like drop equals true, and then it doesn't do that. And so now I actually have a very nice data frame. It's numbered from zero to 140. And, um, and then what I'm going to do for at least this first step of the video, I've done all my parsing stuff, is I'm going to say that, save all that. So um, I should do this. I should say uh, um, all df, I'm going to say all df dot to csv, and I'm going to call that um, events dot csv, and then I don't want to save the index in that um, because that, it's not really useful information. And so I'm going to do that, and then before I end this video, I just want to kind of look at it and make sure that it looks reasonable. And, uh, and it certainly does, right? So in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see, well, how can we actually um, convert, um, how can we actually convert these addresses into, um, into locations?